options now. Um, some people could be across in a whole other country that you're trying to do business with. Um, and then from our end, what was the challenges of building an application like this? Um, and so really it was, number one, the um, different platforms out there, um, as well as the broad user base. So we're going to need to appeal to everyone from an individual consumer all the way up to the CTO of HP. So the solution that we came up with was a cross-platform solution, um, although we know that um, the workforce is mobile and consumers are mobile, um, we are in front of a computer sometimes as well. So the ability to log in from the different platforms and have um, access to all of your documentation, all of your um, signature requests that are pending, um, that was very important. Also a native app experience, going back to that usability, um, we I just got the one minute mark, which throws you off a little bit. Um, <laughs> we wanted to make sure that it was a good user experience if you were an iOS user, an Android user, or a Windows user. Um, easy to get started. It needed to be something that you could download and as a consumer or my eight-year-old grandmother, um, she could figure out how to set up a username and password, create her signature, um, upload the document, sign it, and send it back to who she was um, sending it to. Um, we also didn't want people to have to, you know, move all of their documents to DocuSign. That's a big, um, that's a big hassle. So being out of the box integrated with solutions like Evernote, Dropbox, Box, and Salesforce. Um, and then taking it to the next level of making it a true productivity and utility app. So putting in features that alerted you when someone had signed a document, viewed a document, um, had returned the document. Um, and then also the in-person remote signing. So with all those solutions, here are our results. Um, we've had more than 1.7 million downloads um, across the different app stores. We've had adoption in over 35 countries. Um, we've been recognized for top awards from Apple and the Edison's Award, TechCrunch, featured in Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, um, Mashable. And the most important thing, I think, is um, what our customers say. So everything from the CTO of Sugar CRM um, down to the individual consumer and real estate professional about how the apps changed their life has been amazing. So there you go. question was just um, we wanted to know a little bit about the user interface design for the application mm -hmm. um, to, for a judging criteria and I was wondering if you had more slides that would demonstrate that for us. We were limited to the five slides I don't um, and um, but you can definitely download the application I could also follow up if, if you can with some slides or show you before you guys judge but we um, we didn't have um, examples across the platform. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but it is specific. We designed, you know, iOS 7. We've rolled out the new user interface. Um, Android is Android specific um, and Windows as well. So they're all native. They're all native. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe describe the process of how a person receives this? Do they receive it by email and then Yes, um, absolutely. So there's a couple of ways that um, people interact with DocuSign. Some it, um, people actually discover DocuSign within the app stores, um, and those are typically individual um, users or consumers who download the application, have something to sign, they open it, um, have an attachment in an email or something, and they open it, um, they sign and return. The other way is um, the uniqueness of our customers send out documents through DocuSign and that in turn is a viral effect that you now may see, receive an email from um, let's say your real estate agent needing you to sign documents. Um, you click on that, you can either sign within the application or you can sign um, online. Um, or through mobile web as well. So whatever that seamless experience is for the end user, we want to make sure that um, it's easy. Are you looking at this as, uh, so I know this is mostly D2B, and that would be to see, you're looking at C2C as well? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it spans, definitely spans across um, B2B, B2C, and C2C. And I can give you an example. Let's say um, 
I think it's a good example of personal meets professional, right? So I may be the CTO of Sugar CRM, and I may use DocuSign to send out to our vendor something to, to sign. Um, that is a B2B example. Um, I may also have to sign my daughter's um, school permission slip, and that would be, I think, kind of more of a C2C example. Um, and a real estate agent would be more of a B2C example, so they send out the documents. Built in to verify your signatures. Any of us who sign on Safeway's <coughs> signature pads can make sure that they're not legible to myself. So, what do you do to yeah. verify that with your systems? Um, absolutely. So, we apply, um, we comply with all the e signature um, laws, um, and we have high security around that. Um, back to kind of um, what I was talking about of printing it out and having someone sign it and then getting it back that really has no audit trail, right? So when someone signs a document on DocuSign, we have a timestamp, we have an IP address, we know when that document was opened, when it was closed, when it was returned. So there's an audit trail of what's happening. Um, we do take identity very seriously as well, so we have different identity levels of checks. So for a consumer who's purchased or signing their um, daughter's permission slip, maybe doesn't need that as high a level of security, but someone who, um, you know, American Express, who's sending it out to a client may, and we actually have SMS authentication, email authentication, phone call authentication, so you can set all those different parameters up. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next presenter was going to be Tableau Mobile, but they couldn't make it today. Um, and just as a reminder, you, the audience, will be voting on uh, who you think is most deserving of the best overall app award, so please consider all presentations throughout the afternoon. Our next presenter will be from Big Tin Can, uh, representing the Big Tin Can Hub. Uh, w welcome, David Keene. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. First of all, before I start, I want to say thanks to the Regalix team for putting on something like this. I want to say it's about time we had a business app award, actually, so thanks for, for doing that. Okay, yeah, I'll give them a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, so my job is to talk to you about Big Tin Can. So my name is David Keane. I'm the CEO and founder of Big Tin Can. Let's get this all right. Rocking. So the reason we're all here, I believe, in this room is because of this. This mobile revolution is not just something that's driving people to go out with a mobile phone and check the weather when they're out and about or look at their favourite sports team, what it's doing, and check their personal email. We really fundamentally believe that the mobility revolution is actually changing the way enterprise customers do their business. It's changing the way they work with their customers, with their suppliers, with their business partners. But maybe most importantly, it's actually driving the way they are focused on building productivity for the people inside their own enterprise. And that's really something that we think is going to be a significant factor in driving mobility rollout throughout the rest of the next few years. So we've all seen this massive growth in enterprise use of mobile devices, and we're all probably carrying two or three of them with us today. But at the same time that's been happening, we've been seeing a thing we call the content explosion. And what that means is that for people in business, and I'm sure for many of us here as well, we now have access to so many different content sources. We may have access to sync and share tools, access to corporate systems like Microsoft SharePoint or Salesforce.com, even have access to traditional file server content. The problem for people has been, how do I actually make sense of all that content? There's so much information there for me. I'm trying to interact with it on a device like this, which really often isn't designed to enable me to work with content the way I was doing it on a big screened PC. So we believe the future of enterprise computing is really about this. How do we find a way to bring together those worlds to enable people on mobile devices to not just get access to content and be able to work with it, but actually to be able to understand the relevancy and the value of that information, to be able to turn it into something that their people in the field can actually learn from and do more with. So at Big Tin Can, our job and our mission has been to build a new platform designed from the ground up for this mobile world. Rather than taking existing technology sets and trying to add on to them or putting front ends to existing corporate systems, we actually built from the ground up a tool set that we would use to enable people to be productive on their mobile devices when they're working with content. 
And that's quite a major task because we had to think about this completely afresh for every different mobile platform designed to ensure that we could still connect with existing tools uh, and meet the requirements of the enterprise because we're targeting enterprise kind of customers. So the first part of that is security. We've got to be able to ensure that we're delivering a secure platform. So I'm not going to go into this in detail during the presentation in five minutes, but we've got all the right tick boxes for the kind of security and management people need to deploy this in the enterprise world. But what is important though is of course security itself doesn't do anything for a user. What people need to be able to do is get the intelligence to be able to actually work with content and make sense of content on a mobile device. The context to which you use these phones and tablets is so different from the way we've worked in PCs in the past. We now need to think about new tools that can deliver that information in a new kind of way and help people to actually work with it in a better, better structure. And we need to link that into a social environment. And by social, we don't just mean Facebook and Twitter feeds. We actually mean a way that the value of information, like people work with each other, but can be conveyed and passed on. So I'm able to understand what could be a good piece of content for me based on the system being able to advise me and take me through a journey of information and learning. So our technology, Big Tin Can Hub, uh, what it does is it provides, first of all, a tool that enables you to automatically deliver content out to people on mobile devices. And it supports all the different mobile device platforms and uh, works in an uh, in interactive way. But as well as that, it enables users to actually work with content. We really believe that these, these devices are more than just viewers of PDF files. They're actually tools that could be used to change the way people actually work every day. And so Big Tin Can Hub enables users to work with content, to edit Microsoft Office format documents, to annotate on PDFs, to view different, different kinds of content, and to share and control that information on their device. And because we built the tool from scratch for mobile, we weren't held back with the old ideas of what content actually was. We wanted to revolutionise the idea that corporate content isn't just files and folders. It's kind of anything people need to be able to use in they're doing their actual job. And that was to create what we call a single pane of glass, basically a single view to which enterprise users can get access to all the information and content they need to actually do their job. And then we rounded that out with a technology we call content intelligence. And I'm going to be showing content intelligence if anybody's interested uh, after the presentation. But the idea was, couldn't we actually start to learn from how people work with content? What if we could actually look at the behaviours every individual has around the information they get access to and map that to a social graph of how people actually relate to each other and turn that into what you can think of as big data for content, but turn it into a way of being able to help users to get a bit of an idea of what might be more valuable or relevant to them when they look at all the content they have access to. And that same thing applies both to content publishers who now for the first time want to be able to work with that information, understand how the information they're publishing is actually being used in the real world. So again, Big Tin Can, our mission is to deliver the right content to the right people at the right time and location in a way that users can actually understand and work with that content. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. So um, I won't name any customers here, but the principle being, let's say, for example, I've got a field of engineers and I'm in, in the field with thousands of engineers right now and I'm trying to get access to information. So the first challenge I have is how do I push all that information out to people? But then once I've done that, how do I help that person on a mobile device to know what's more relevant to them? They may have 50 different PowerPoints or 20 different manuals or you know, access to different videos that might guide them to a particular situation. So based on the context of the way they're actually working, content intelligence can actually help people to know what might be more relevant or valued to them and how they actually work with materials. So how does your solution fit with mobile device management? Do you subsume that? No, we're, so mobile device management is a specific technology for controlling secure access to an entire device. So we provide the same level of functionality but for content only inside our container. So we're not a device management platform, we're a content management platform that provides the levels of control and management you need but over the, the content inside that platform. Yeah. So I guess one of the things about it is that many people have tried to focus on the idea of delivering information out to people in the field. And they've taken existing ideas that have come from the PC or the web world and tried to turn them into mobile solutions. And that was often about things like how do I send files and folders out to people. I guess our mission was to try and say in the mobile world we can't define content in the same way we did it in the past. We have to build things fresh for mobile. That's a lot of work to think about it and build it. But if you do that you're not then held back by the same restrictions and controls. So for example 
example, we can deliver complete HTML5 applications that run offline inside our secure container. We can deliver interactive forms in the same way that someone could deliver a traditional PDF file or Microsoft Word file in the past. So our goal was to take away those kind of limitations that were delivered or created based on trying to take technology from existing things and port it to mobile. Great. Thanks so much, everybody.